Well, just how good is your memory? Now, if you consider it to be above average, could you recall 2,000 numbers in order in under five and a half minutes? Well, this is exactly what Bedford View-based mentalist and memory expert Michael Abramson did on International Pi Day on Monday, breaking his own world record by rattling off the first 2,000 digits of pi in a remarkable time of 5 minutes and 12 seconds. Now, this achievement follows on a previous world record in 2019 when Abrahamson recited the first 1,500 digits of pi in 4 minutes and 7 seconds. Well, he joins us now on Zoom to talk about his achievement. Abraham Sin, a very good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome. Good morning to you, Simpiwe. Thank you so much for having me. Good to have you on the show this morning, sir. Now, how long did you prepare for this effort and uh, what did the preparation entail? Well, it started off about 2018 when I broke my previous record and that took quite a bit of effort. But since then, uh, because of COVID, I've had to put it off every single year and I've had to wait till a year on the 14th of March, which is world official Pi Day, to find a time when I could actually do it. So this year was the first opportunity to do that. And the nice thing about it was that uh, I put it on hold, but I still had the digits somewhere in my mind. So I had to now in the last sort of month or so, recap it, revise it. It was a lot of revision. I would record myself doing it, try and get the speed faster and uh, just practice every single day as much as I could when I was driving in a car or when I was lying in bed about to fall asleep, just going through the figures in my mind. But it's one thing doing it in practice and another thing doing it when the world record is at stake. So it was quite a, a mental effort, so to speak. Oh, Michael, just how confident were you of breaking the world record? I was and I wasn't, to tell you the truth, because <laughs> I knew that I had it in me. I had this ability in me to do it because I'd broken the world record three years ago. Mm -hmm. But the problem is the pressure when you do it. I'm sitting with three very well-esteemed judges who are watching every step of what I'm doing. They have printouts in front of them and they're able to follow all the digits as I call them out. You're not allowed to make a mistake and you have to call out at the pace that I went at about six and a half digits per second, which means that you barely have time to have, to have a breath in between. So you've got to control your breathing. You've got to concentrate on making sure that you don't make a single mistake. And also you've got to call all these digits out correctly and be audible enough that people can hear what you're saying, because it does go to an official ratified pie judging committee and they have to listen back and play the video back that I recorded for them and make sure that I've said every single digit and then I get officially ratified as having the world record. So it's stressful. Uh, I was fairly confident that I could do it, but on the day itself, I was very nervous and I had doubts. Yeah. I mean, is this ability something that you've had to learn or is it a gift that you are blessed with? Simpiwe, I think a bit of both. I think uh, I was probably given some sort of talent to be able to remember information. Uh -huh. But over the past number of years, 25 years, I've been running memory courses for students at schools and universities. I've been to over 60 schools in the country. I commentated for the SABC uh, on the World Cup 2010. And for that tournament, I had to remember the names of every single player in every team and all their background information. And then I went on the Afrikaans music game show, Nuit for Nuit, also on SABC three years ago. And I had to learn lyrics of every song that uh, that was on their database and try and memorize those lyrics in about a week or so. So I use these skills in my in my day to day life. So I've definitely developed them to an extent where I can use them when I need them. But I think there was some sort of ability to begin with as well that I've just mm. honed over the years. Mm. And just how draining was it? And would you attempt it again? It was extremely draining. The, yeah. the stress of going to bed the night before and wondering, am I going to do it? Am I not going to do it? Uh, it was extremely draining. I was exhausted afterwards. The judges barely spoke to me because they said to me, you seem so exhausted. You need to go and lie down. Even now, <laughs> three days later, I feel pretty tired about it. Would I attempt it again? Uh, I'm not sure that I could go much faster than I did at the moment. I think I went to my absolute limit of pace. And in fact, the time that I achieved now, as you say, five minutes and 12 seconds was the fastest fastest I'd ever done. Even in my fastest practice, I wasn't able to get that speed. So I'm not sure how much faster I can go. Uh, so I might attempt something similar in the future. But I think as far as this is concerned, I think this needs to go on the back burner for quite a while while I catch my, my breath back and while I get a little bit of sleep and relax the mind a bit. Any hint of any you know, similar challenges lined up in the future? 
there are always memory challenges that exist and always things that you can do. Like, for example, I'm a professional mentalist, as you mentioned. So in my shows, I memorize a shuffled pack of cards in 15 seconds. I get someone to take a pack of playing cards, they mix it up, they shuffle it. And then I have 15 seconds to go through it and try and remember the order of every single card. So that's something I want to try and develop and get even faster with. Um, the other skills, obviously, trying to remember as much information as I can. I did learn a few years ago the names and capitals and flags of every country in the world and where it's located on the world map. It took me 11 minutes to do that. So there are various things that I want to try and improve and learn on and learn and develop my mind to another extent. But I think as far as I'm concerned now with this pie challenge, it was demanding enough and it needs to go on the back burner for a while. Ah, Michael, lovely chatting to you, man. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. And you just so a quick much. one. Um, lotto numbers. I know that uh, so <laughs> many people are quite interested to know whether you'd be able to juggle, you know, the lotto numbers because they are largely dependent on, you know, probability. Exactly. And I've, I've actually got a background in probability because I teach statistics at university and I teach statistics also to varsity students. I've got an honors degree in statistics. Mm -hmm. But the, the thing is, the reason that I can't predict the lotto numbers is not because of any failings of myself, but because of the way the system works. Because it's a machine generating the numbers, uh, it's completely random. If it was a person or people who had to say a number between 1 and 49 and just come up with their own digits, then I could probably read the people and get a sense of what numbers they're likely to go for. But because it's done with a machine and it's completely random, uh, it's up to the machine to pull out numbers. So just advice for people who do play the lotto, there is no such thing as hot numbers and cold numbers and looking at patterns of numbers in previous weeks. Every time the draw gets conducted, it's a completely random event. So even if a number's come up five, uh, five uh, lotto draws in a row, it could still come up again. And numbers that haven't come up for a while, there's no guarantee that they will start coming up now. So my advice to you is play for fun, play only the money that you can afford. And if you do manage to win something, fantastic, but don't bank on it. Yeah, it's all about probability and a bit of luck, you say. <laughs> All Indeed. right, Mike, lovely mm -hmm. chatting to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Simpiwe. All right, that was a mentalist and memory expert, Michael Abrahamson, chatting to us about his record-breaking feat on Monday.